since we have a very large assembly and we have another mass in the parish hall and we have masses throughout the day, I caution myself to be brief in this homily. Now, people do tell me, please do not begin by saying you'll be brief because whenever you say that, you are not brief. I want to suggest one Easter thought for you along these lines. There are various words for power. Potestas is a Latin word. It means structural power, power to loose and to bind, power to order people, to make laws and have a leverage to implement the value of the law. Potestas doesn't cause a transformation in a person. Sometimes we'll obey the law because we are fearful. Or sometimes we'll obey it because we are obedient by nature. Or we want to stay inside the fold of those who are acceptable. And therefore we will obey the law. Sometimes we're energized to obey the law because of guilt. We have used guilt a lot, very effectively, for a long time in the church, to get people to obey the laws. But these do not cause you to change. They don't occasion any change inside of you. It's an external observance so frequently. The Greek word exousia is also a word that means power. It's a different kind of power. And this is the power that somehow enters into your life through inspiration. You have somebody who inspires you in your life, causes you to change. If you encounter Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you will change because of the inspiration and the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. Now, I have a habit of, for years, of picking an Easter person. Who is my Easter person? And for years, I've had Easter persons that were amazing. My mother was an Easter person for me one year. She inspired me and nurtured me and called me to be the best I could be. My father was an Easter person. And Nelson Mandela was my Easter person one year. 27 years in jail, he comes out and he forgives. I said, wow, that's inspiring. Um, Mother Teresa was my Easter person one year after I came back from a sabbatical in India. I had lots of people like that. But they're not the only ones that occasion an interior change. One year, I selected a person who had betrayed my trust. Somebody who really, really wounded me. And I took that person to be my Easter person because that person asked me to forgive in a new way. Asked me to overlook human failings in a way I had not done before. Asked me not to be too sensitive, not to be too demanding, not to ask for too much recognition. To understand human failings, that's a change. That can change you inside. Well, this year, I selected a little boy who was four years old. And within the last year, he was diagnosed with autism. He belongs to Holy Family, but I'll call him Henry. I don't want to say his real name. But this little boy is, just fell out of heaven. And he called people to change. He called us to see life differently. And every time I saw a little child after that, I saw this boy. He called people to pray more, to understand the human condition, to thank God for the miracles of being different. 
and I made this child my Easter person. The one who calls me to see things differently, to pray in a new way, to understand the meaning of life, the value of life, to be grateful for the gifts of life. This little boy taught me that and changed the manner in which I pray since they asked me to pray for him. I have thought a lot about this little boy. I prayed a lot for him. And I carried him with me, and he just influenced the way I see things. I want you to think who your Easter person is. Who calls you to change? Somebody who has loved you calls you to be more generous, to be more grateful. The love was given to you. The generosity extended to you wasn't for you to keep. It was for you to share. Perhaps it's somebody who offended you, disappointed you in life, calls you to forgive in a new way, to understand human weakness, to begin to understand that not all your expectations are reasonable and not all should be met. And reminds you that you, me, we do not meet the expectations of many others. It calls us to understand things differently. Whoever has offended you in your life calls you to forgive. That's an Easter person. So who is your Easter person? I want you to think about that. Who is it that asks you to reach down, asks you to reach down inside yourself and draw from that reservoir of grace and goodness and beauty that's deep inside of you? That's your Easter person. I want you to think about that because that person is the one who calls you to live in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That person is the one who summons you to say, Jesus is risen and that makes a difference in my life. Not that I just showed up for mass and then went home and said, I did my Easter duty but to say I showed up and somehow the power and the grace of this time touched my life and Jesus risen from the dead changed something in me. The grace of God came alive in me in a new way. And now I will be more grateful, more understanding, more patient, more forgiving. I will be a blessing instead of a burden. That's Easter. And that's the thought I want to leave with you. When you journey through this day, I want you to think, who is your Easter person? And what new life does this person ask you to recover, to bring into your awareness, to enrich your life, to make your life and the lives of others better. Because Jesus has risen from the dead and he calls each one of us to new life.